Hi guys, and welcome to Macro Markets, where we analyze how the macroeconomic news and events impact the crypto space. I'm your host, Marcel Peschman, veteran, stock markets and derivatives trader, analyst at Cointelegraph. Today's show will start by discussing the US home prices, which has been surprisingly resilient despite bearish remarks from landlords. Home prices rose for a third straight month in April, S&P case Schiller Index says. Home prices in April were 0.5% higher month to month after seasonal adjustments. Prices are now just 2.4% below their June 2022 peak. You're gonna be wondering how is that possible given that landlords across the country, especially those focused on short-term rentals, are facing a 40% or higher revenue decline versus the previous year. Well, the CNBC article partially explains the phenomenon of increasing home prices amid a recessionist environment. Buyers, however, are still out in force, but they're coming up against extremely low inventory of homes for sale. Part of that is because the vast majority of homeowners have mortgage rates in the 3% range, which makes them much less likely to want to sell their home and buy another at a higher rate. Okay, let's take a step back here because that's the juicy part of the story. Mortgage rates are extremely high right now. 6% for a fixed 30-year contract. Compounded, that's equivalent to paying 4.7 times over the house value just in interest rates alone. As a comparison, a 3% rate would represent a mere 1.4 additional house value during 30 years. Consequently, if someone wishes to sell your current house and pay off the remainder of the mortgage, this person will face the new rates when buying another house. That doesn't make much sense, so they just stick with the current mortgage at the lower rates. And what is the relationship between the apparently heated housing market and cryptos? Well, for starters, regardless of the price increase, landlords are facing a severe contraction in short-term rentals. According to data from all the rooms, revenue for listings in Phoenix, Austin, Nashville, Denver, Seattle, and Orlando faced 35% or higher declines year over year. That creates an enormous sell pressure because those investors were counting on the property income as a dividend yield. Let's imagine a scenario where this seller is able to get rid of this property, maybe even at a similar price to what they've paid in the past. Where do you think that this money will land? The S&P 500 is trading at a mere 8% below its all-time high at 19 times earnings. The five-year treasures are paying 4.1% per year, while inflation is currently running at 4%. Lastly, Gold, boomers' preferred instrument, is trading at 1900, a mere 7.5% below its all-time high. The truth is, there's no safe place out there. You're either buying something close to its peak valuation or sit tight in fixed income with the risk of additional trillion dollar stimulus packages shooting everything up. That's why Bitcoin matters, because of its scarcity an alternative route to the mayhem of fiat money. Now, let's move to Apple, the world's largest company by market capitalization. Apple stock has another 30% upside, Citi says in a new buy rating. The stock's 46% gain in 2023 has it near a $3 trillion value. Apple's ability to expand margins is underestimated, Citi says. First of all, hats off to Apple. Impressive gains, not to mention the market capitalization, which is enough to acquire Amazon, Facebook, and Samsung, paying a 24% premium for those companies. Apple's earnings is even more impressive, $95 billion over the past 12 months. Now that's a good thing, don't get me wrong, it doesn't matter if they pay out dividends or use the money to repurchase stock on buybacks as long as there's profit. But even if it's sustainable, such a strategy inflates the stock valuation, as the management has incentives to keep buying regardless of the price level. Bonuses 
are a big thing for corporations. So the same people who manage the buybacks are benefited from that. On the other hand, the investor that previously bought Apple shares, let's say at 16 times earnings, is taking shares at 32 times earnings, just because board members favor higher multiples, which translates to higher bonuses for them. Now, that creates a problem for shareholders because you don't want to invest in overly valued companies. And that's exactly what those buybacks are causing. Now, the second problem caused by inflation valuations, M&A, mergers and acquisitions. Let's say Apple decides to acquire Samsung, which is trading at 15 times earnings in comparison to Apple's 32 times. So it looks like a bargain. And even if they pay a 40% premium to close the transaction, it makes sense for the board to close the deal. So now you have an endless loop of excessive valuations as the incentives are reversed. No one cares about the profitability in five years time, simply because their bonuses based on stock price and multiples six months from now. In time, Apple's shareholder will understand that the 32 times earnings valuation is a curse, not something to be chased. For now, the stock market seems the perfect safe heaven, but as soon as the earnings no longer grow, the magic is over. Those familiar with trading altcoins know very well what happens when the tide changes. It doesn't matter how passionate the community is or how engaged the developers are, everyone wants out. Well, that's it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed the show. Remember to like and subscribe the new Cointelegraph Marketing Research YouTube channel. See you.